In the mid-1800s, breweries were popping up all around the United States. Not only was it an honest way to make a living, but if you had a good mind for business, you could strike it rich in a matter of years. This sentiment enticed steamship captain Frederick Papps to take his life savings and purchase a 50% stake in Milwaukee-based Best Brewery. Then, through a string of tragic events and a little bit of luck, Papps was able to gain control of the company and expand. The Great Chicago Fire had decimated his nearby competition, so Papps ramped up production and became the first American brewer to produce 1 million barrels in a single year. From here he was able to hold tight to his position for many years, leading the brewing industry as a beer baron. With his wealth, he built a colossal mansion along Milwaukee's Wisconsin Avenue, but that's a story for another video. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Today we are going to be looking at the nearby mansions of his two sons, Frederick Jr. and Gustav. We'll head down to West Highland Avenue, where Frederick was the first to build his mansion. The blonde brick and limestone neoclassical house took two full years to build as artists added finishing touches. When it was completed in 1898, Frederick Jr. was ready to move in with his family. Entering the mansion, we arrive in the stair hall, surrounded by festoons decorating the elaborate door surrounds and gracing the stair landing's balcony. Though the entryway is large, it is made to feel cozy with the antique furniture snuggled up to the glazed tile fireplace. Let's continue through the opening. The music room is filled with natural light pouring in from the bay window over tossed furs and adding depth to the low-run wainscoting capped by fluted pilasters supporting a gilded frieze. If we would have headed the other way in the stair hall, we would have gone through a pair of dark wood Solomonic columns. The study's furnishings echo its architectural elements with the same intricately carved wood used throughout. The dining room embraces gothic tracery in its oversized wainscoting with simple but impactful fretwork outlining the hutch and subsequent fireplace. Going next door, Gustav hired the same architectural firm that designed his father's house to create his mansion in 1898, which was a wedding present from his father. He and his wife quickly began growing their family to have enough children to fill its many rooms. And while Gustav might not have been his father's namesake, he would end up taking over when Frederick Sr. passed away. Continuing inside, we are welcomed into the reception hall finished in dark woods and decorated with marble sculptures. The formal parlor is reminiscent of his brother's music room with paneled sections of wallpaper and low wainscoting. Across the reception hall, the music room plays on neoclassical elements with ionic columns and a Greek key pattern worked into the fireplace and furnishings. Just beyond the opening, we will pass by the dining room while admiring its ornate millwork. Let's return now to the reception hall and begin making our way up the grand staircase. As we reach the top of the stairs, we arrive at the landing flanked by arcades and realize that the second floor is perhaps more opulent than the first. Behind us is the library with half-height glass-paned bookcases skirting the room and seats for all the children to sit and study. The young couple was so busy growing their family that they needed multiple cribs in their nursery. And unlike many couples of the time, they shared the same bed in their own room. Frederick Jr. lived in his mansion until he sold it in 1919. It was immediately used as a religious center and then broken up into apartments. In 1905, Gustav sold his mansion to the Pritzlaff family, who cherished it as their family home for nearly five decades. Then the mansion was reworked several times to become a daycare and eventually a school. Frederick's mansion was slowly pieced back together over time, with much of the interior being restored. And while a substantial portion of Gustav's interior remains intact, the vast majority of it was demolished and replaced by the expansions you see here. Which mansion was your favorite? Also, go ahead and leave a like on this video if you would like to see their father's mansion in a future video. As always, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.